Welcome to basic setup of the Vista 20P Home Alarm System, Part 9. Here's a list of the other videos in this series, and easy to click on links to go view them. Today we're going to do some hands-on programming for changing security codes. I'm hoping you remember this diagram from Part 8. It explains how all the security code stuff works. Let's start at the beginning. The installer's default security code is 4112. Yeah, but what if I just moved into my house, the default security code doesn't work, and I don't know what the new security code is. What do I do then? Let's see, you could move, or you could ask the alarm panel to tell you what the new code is. To do this, go to the alarm box and disconnect the battery. Then you want to disconnect the power transformer. If you don't know where the transformer is, go inside the panel, and on the far left-hand side, you'll find these two contacts. This is where your main AC power comes in. Just disconnect one of the wires. Your goal here is to completely remove power from the alarm box. Now let's put power back on. Hook up your battery, then plug your transformer back in. Your panel will then power up. Within 50 seconds of powering up, press the asterisk and the pound key at the same time. This does place you in programming mode. If it didn't work for you, unfortunately alarm companies can lock out this ability to enter programming mode this way. Anyway, from this screen enter pound two zero. The control panel will now display the installer code one digit at a time. This code is 4112. Okay, what's up with the zero before each number? I have two theories on this. Either Honeywell lets their programmers drink while programming, or they live in a state with legalized marijuana. That's the only way I can make sense out of it. If you already know the installer code, skip everything you've seen up to now, and simply enter the installer code followed by the number 800. This also will put you into programming mode. Only one person can change the installer code, and that's the installer. The way we're going to do this is, type asterisk 20 followed by your new four digit code. Let's change it to 1472. For the rest of the video, let's keep the installer code at 4112. The default master code is 1234. There are two ways to change this code. The installer can change it, or the master user can change it. This is how the master user changes his own code. Enter the current master code, then the number 8, which means you want to change a user's attributes or security codes, then the number 02 for user 2, enter the new four digit security code, and then you have to enter it a second time for confirmation. Let's give it a try. If my current master code was 4321, and I want to change the code to 1234, then we type it again for confirmation. So here's your button pushes. Wow, that's a lot of numbers. This is what it looks like on the screen. Change to 1234. Does it work? I'd like to point out a very important detail at this point. You'll notice when I tested my new security code, I did not try to arm the system with it. What I did was type the security code in to hit the off key. And if it works, you'll get a chime. If your code didn't work, you wouldn't get a chime. And just in case you're wondering why I'm making this point, let's say you arm your system with quick arm enable. Then you take your brand new security code and try to disarm it. And your old code doesn't work because you tried changing it. The answer to this pop quiz is, you're stuck in a house with an alarm system you can't disarm. Let's digress to a short side topic discussion. Because I feel bad that I threw a topic at you you may not be familiar with. So they have a way of quickly arming the system. So in installer code, you enter asterisk 2, 1. It asks you, do you want a quick arm? Well, the answer is yes. To do that, we say 1, then enter. Now we can exit programming. We're out of programming. Now watch what happens. I can hit the pound sign, and then arm. It has bypassed the need to use your security code to arm the system, but you still need to use the security code to disarm the system. Okay, let's get back on topic. 
So, what if you don't know what your master code is? You obviously can't use what I just showed you to reset it. But never fear, we have a workaround. Remember how we got the alarm panel to tell us what the installer code was? Well, we can use that installer code to change the master code. And the good news is, according to the installation manual, the procedure is even simpler than what we just did. We start out by entering the installer code, then the number 8, and the number 02 to select master user, and finally the new master code. You'll notice we did not have to enter the new master code twice, like we had to last time. Let's put in some numbers. Our installer code is 4112, and we'll make our new master code 4321. So, here's our button push sequence, and let's take a look at what it looks like. Wow, that was actually a lot easier. Let's see, so far we've changed the installer code and the master user code. What's next? Let's assign other users to the alarm panel. Heading back over to our instruction manual, we have a pleasant surprise waiting for us. That is, we already know how to do this. If this data entry format looks familiar to you, it's because it's nearly identical to this command. That's the installer code changing the master code. Here's the two things that are different. The installer can only change his own code and the master code. He cannot add users. So instead of using the installer's code, we'll use the master code instead. And the other difference? Instead of being locked into changing just user number 2, which is the master code, you can input any user from 3 all the way up to 49. At this point, I think I need to put some emphasis on documentation. We all hate it, but some evils are necessary. Right now, you've only had to memorize two security codes. Since security codes cannot be duplicated, go to the user's guide, and in the back, they've provided you this nice little chart. The user number you're going to enter into the command is here. Write the name of the user here, and their four-digit assigned security code here. Remember, once you've assigned a user, this is the only place you'll find the security code. The Vista 20P doesn't even give you a chance to use your dog's name as a reminder as to what your code is. How antiquated is that? Let's go ahead and add user number 5. Start out by typing in the master code, the number 8, 0, 05 for user 5, and finally the security code for the new user. User number 5 has now been added. Let's talk about some of the things that can go wrong. While adding users, the panel cannot be armed. It'll just ignore you. On this subject, here's the tricky part. Partition 2 can't be armed either. Since each partition normally has its own control panel, you may be trying to add users on panel number 1, but partition 2 is armed and you don't know it. This happened to me when I was playing around with my new 6172 control panel. This touchscreen button right here was the culprit. I spent almost a whole day trying to figure out why I couldn't get into program mode because Partition 2 was armed and I didn't know it. Additionally, as a reminder, security codes cannot be duplicated. Let's try it and see what happens. Oh no, the dreaded long beep. I've had nightmares about that sound. What if you're scratching your head and say, I didn't put that code in previously? Well, did you just buy the house from someone else? Did the previous owner give you his password table? If not, you could be entering a code that was already programmed for the previous owner's dog. The fix? We can delete all previous passwords one user at a time. Let's see, how do we do this? Ah, that looks simple enough. Just like adding a user, start out with your master code, the number 8, then the user number, followed by the pound sign, then the number 0. Let's practice by deleting user number 5. Use caution with all this user programming. Don't type too slowly. The Vista 20P has a very short attention span. If it spends too much time waiting for your button pushes, it will space out like a high schooler in history class. And nothing will get accomplished. Okay, here's a problem that requires reading between the lines. Let's say you have a really big family. 
and you've programmed users 33 through 49 into your alarm panel. But none of them can seem to arm or disarm the alarm. The problem most likely is your alarm system is using partition 1 and the default for all these users is partition 2. To fix this, we're going to change their active partition attribute from 2 over to 1. Let's break this programming command down. We already know the first half of this command. Master code, then 8, then a user number. Next, we type a pound sign. Then we select our attribute. Looking at the list, number 3 is what we want, active partitions. Then we pick partition 1 as our value. Now, any sane person would think, I've followed the instructions exactly, so it should work. But if you type this in, nothing will happen. Here's why. For attribute number 3, you have to read the fine print. And the fine print says that you have to finish off this programming command with a pound sign. Okay, let's try it. User 34 is now assigned to partition 1. All is good in the world. Time for my disclaimer. I am not a professional alarm installer. I'm just some guy that likes to learn new stuff and pass it on to others. Thanks for watching.